My fellow brothers and sisters, children and family members, Alhamdulillah, tonight is the fifth night of Ramadan and inshallah tonight our dear Hufad will begin the sixth juz of the Qur'an. Inshallah today we cover the sixth and a quarter into the seventh. There are many uh, things that we want to talk about inshallah, but I want to do it in a way where we can summarize, <clears throat> subhanAllah, the, the subject matters. First and foremost, my fellow Muslims, we see that in our religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescriptions for times and occasions, uh, different times of the day, different uh, seasons throughout the course of the year. It seems as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping us on our feet always. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping us focused on our feet, always vigilant. It's time for salah, it's time to break your fast, it's time for hajj. It's always constantly in that position. Why? What is the purpose behind that? Because my fellow Muslims, the saying is, كَمَا تَحْيَوْنَ تَمُوتُونَ كَمَا تَمُوتُونَ تُحْشَرُونَ These are the blessed words that teach us that the way we live is the way we will die. And the way we die is the way we'll be resurrected on the Day of Judgment. The constant repetition, sorry, the constant repetition of commandments and keeping us focused on our religion is for the hopes that we die with our religion. Two nights ago there was a shooting in downtown Dallas, 16 injured, one dead. Shootings in San Antonio and places that no one wants to be known that they're there. Imagine for a moment, my fellow Muslims, just imagine for a moment. I want you to think about this. Our death comes at a place where we are doing something we're ashamed for others to know about. What kind of death is that? We have to work towards a noble death. Because a noble death will make the journey ahead easy for us. And that is why our religion teaches us, constantly reminds us, keeps us on our toes, that we don't falter and fall into something that becomes a habitual practice where the angel of death knocks our door and that's where our soul goes. We should be begging Allah for a noble death. If that's a dua you need to make this Ramadan, oh Allah, give me a noble death. ما يفعل الله بعذابكم إن شكرتم وآمنتم وكان الله شاكرا عليما لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم These two verses, the last verse of the fifth juice and the beginning of the sixth juice puts a very beautiful picture together and puts all matters into context. There are many out there who feel that Allah subhanahu is unjust. He wants us to beg Him for forgiveness and constantly turn to Him as if, you know, if we don't do it, then it's so wrong for us to do it because Allah is going to constantly punish me. What does Allah get from punishing you? He's asking us. The way we have in cultures of Islam amplified hellfire is as if you're all doomed for hell, you'll be lucky if you go to hell. No, everyone is destined for heaven. It's practically impossible to go to hell. You have to be quite stubborn to go to hell. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ What will Allah get from punishing you? What is this perception that we've created of Allah? That He's mean, na'udhu billah. He's evil, na'udhu billah. He's unforgiving, na'udhu billah. It's not like that. Allah wants to forgive. He's looking for the opportunity to forgive you. Even when you don't say it, even when you don't declare it, even though you don't acknowledge it, that I've made a mistake, Allah is looking for opportunities to forgive us. 
There's a hadith that talks about gathering of people and the angels are going up to Allah telling Allah they're doing this and Allah says, what are they doing? And they tell them, why are they doing this for? What do they want from me? There's a conversation happening between the angels who witness such a gathering like this right now before Allah. They're conversing with Allah what's going on. And Allah then declares to the angels, let it be known that I've forgiven them all. And the angels say, but there was a person who just popped in per se. They had no intention of being there, coming there, sitting there, learning, whatever else. They just kind of happened to just come by. And Allah says, I've forgiven that person also. <clears throat> SubhanAllah. Allah wants to forgive. Allah doesn't want to punish. But this is the line here, my fellow Muslims. لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم. When you and I go to the point that we make haram look halal, when we commit acts of haram with great happiness, and we have no shame in hiding or concealing it. Rather we live stream it and we post it and we make TikTok videos of it. Look, I'm at this concert tonight. Look, we're doing this tonight. Look, we're dancing and having a good time tonight. Let me ask you all something. I'm not a mufti. Alhamdulillah, 20 years as an imam. 20 years. I've never given fatwa from the member. Never. But I'll say tonight. Next time you're willing to post something on social media or talk about it to someone else, ask yourself, if I was to die here right now in this position, would I be happy that people know I died here? If you're good with it, go ahead, bismillah. If not, then your guilt is telling you, get out of there. Sins are part of what we are. We make sins. كُلُّكُمْ خَطَّاؤُونَ Everyone is a sinner. وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَابُونَ The best sinners are the ones who turn to Allah in repentance and forgiveness. But for those who amplify, advertise their sins without shame, لا يحب الله Allah does not like this. My fellow Muslims, if I don't know what is right and what is wrong, then I need to go learn what is right and what is wrong. This is the least we have to do as Muslims, my fellow believers. Every single person will be held to account for what they did and what they knew of what they were doing. If you're in business and trade, you should not just know the tricks of the trade or have a degree in it, you should know the Islamic jurisprudence surrounding it. That's your life, you should know it. In a similar fashion, when it comes to what is halal and haram from practices and cultures and practices that happen around us, learn what is right from what is wrong before we continue doing this, repeating it, and allowing others to tag along with it. How do I then expect Allah to forgive me when I myself don't know that what I'm doing is wrong? Learn, my fellow Muslims. We are blessed in this city with so many opportunities to learn and so many venues where you can learn from. I come from a state where in the cities where I was an imam in Florida, there was one masjid in the entire city. There was no institutions and resident scholars and heads programs and qalams and yaqeens and bayinas and tisas. We don't have all that stuff, but we learn what we can learn together. It cannot be possible that I stand before Allah tomorrow and say, Allah, I didn't know. And Allah will say, what didn't I put at your disposal that you are telling me today that you don't know? My fellow Muslims, the line is here tonight. It stops tonight. We should be inspired.
inspiring others to do good, not to do evil. يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ This is what this ummah is about. We tell people what is good and we forbid them from what is evil, not the opposite. Things have to change, my fellow Muslims, because if I'm adamant on my sin without remorse, without guilt, without shame, then I've crossed the line with Allah. It's not then, will Allah forgive me? The question then is, will I ever realize that what I'm doing requires that I seek forgiveness from Allah? My fellow Muslims, in Surah Ma'idah, the surah that we'll be entering into after Surah Nisa tonight, there's a demand that the people of Isa made from Isa salam. We look through the annals of history, through all the stories of Anbiya salam and, and their people, all the questions that were asked regarding divine miracles were asked by the non-believers. It was the non-believers who asked our Nabi Sallallahu to split the moon in half. It was the non-believers who asked Salih Alayhi to get the camel out of the mountain pregnant and give birth to a camel. They are the ones who asked to legitimize if this prophethood of yours is real. It was them. But in the Surah of Ma'idah, in the story of Surah Ma'idah, it's قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُونَ When the believers, the disciples, like the Sahabas of Rasulullah Sallallahu these were like the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him. They asked Jesus, peace be upon him, ask Allah to send a tablecloth from heaven. I.e., believers are asking the Prophet of Allah to give them a sign. تَكُونَ لَنَا عِيدًا لِأَوَّلِنَا وَآخِرِنَا وَآيَةً مِنْ They're asking for this sign. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Isa A.S. was very scared of this. You, you can't be asking Allah these questions. And thus, he asked Allah, and Allah said, I will send it down. But, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بَعْدُ مِنْكُمْ If anyone now disbelieves, فَإِنِّي أُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا لَا أُعَذِّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ I'm going to punish you in a way I've never punished anyone before. What is the point of this? Let me finish the story quickly. They fasted for 30 days, and after fasting, the tablecloth came down. It smelled so beautiful. They asked who should open it. They all said, Isa, some you uncover this tablecloth. He uncovered it, and it was fish. And they said, Ya Isa, is it the fish of this world or the fish of like which sea did he where did Allah catch this one from you know what this story is telling us when we believers have doubt in Allah we question the legitimacy and authority of Allah we ask Allah to show us that he loves us to show us that he cares for us to show us that he's forgiven us how can we even do that how can I fathom that we are alive because Allah loves us. We have health today because Allah has given us an opportunity to spread goodness on this earth. We're not just mere human beings walking and talking and moving on this earth. We are Muslims. We are believers. We're representatives of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu We are here to bring forth goodness on this earth. That's who we are. We should not turn to question Allah and if Allah can really do because if you haven't seen how much Allah has already done for you summum bukmun amyan then we're deaf, dumb and blind May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to Iman. May Allah allow us to fully embrace Him as He's embraced us. May Allah allow us to love Him and turn to Him and work for Him and strive for Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the caliber of like the Sahaba and make us worthy of being from the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Salatul Aisha.